What are you doing here? I mean, why are you here? I mean, why have you come? What's it about? What are we here for? You know, we're here because we like to be entertained. We're here to see the good looking pastor. <laughs> That's a gimme. You know, what, what is the reason? You, know, you need to take a bit of a look at yourself at some time to think, well, why do I come? I'm sure it tells us in the scriptures that we, you know, shouldn't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Um, but why do we come? What's it about? What are we, to do? what are we doing? What's our job, basically? Um, and I just, I was thinking about this the other day with, with other things and I thought, well, you know, I know why I stay in the Lord is because I speak in tongues. You know, it's the one thing that's kept me steadfast in all these years is the fact that I can pray in this spirit to God. And, and that's that one sort of factor for me. And, 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 you know, why do I come? I thought, well, you know, I need to be fed. You know, I need to, need to hear the word of God. I need to be fed with the, with the spirit and I need all those things. And I need the fellowship and, I need that uplifting of the edification of the saints and all that sort of stuff. And sure, if we, you know, get have a good time in with it, well, that's a bonus. But basically, I came from, I, I come simply because I want to survive. I want to survive what the world throws against me every day. And I thought about what my job was. And, and I just go back to the, the, the one scripture that just absolutely amazed me when I came to the Lord. And it's in Mark 16. And chapter 14 will start, so if you want to go there, guys. Coming up. Okay. After we, he appeared unto the eleven and sat at meat and embraced them uh, for their unbelief. And hardness of heart, because they believed not then, uh, which had sent him that after he had risen. And he said unto them, and I love this. He says, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. First part of the job, isn't it? And it's funny how that when you very first get the Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know if it's the same, but it was for me. When I very first received the Holy Ghost. I couldn't stop telling the people about it. And I'm, it just ran out of me like that, that, livers of, that rivers of living water. That's just what ran out of me. In all the wrong places, in all the wrong ways, but I told everyone that came across and they copped it whether they wanted to hear it or not. Not a lot of wisdom. But it's what we're to do, to preach the gospel. And it's he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. And I just could not believe that years and years ago when I was at school and I read the Bible and I was sort of, you know, reading it as a novel sort of thing like everyone was doing at the time was the trendy thing to do. I never, ever, ever saw speaking in tongues. You know, I must have read it a thousand times. Never saw it. Yet once I got filled with the Holy Spirit, it just did not stop jumping out at me. And if they take up serpents or they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What a gift to be able to give to people. To be able to lay hands on the sick and expect God to heal. To move before us. You know, nothing of ourselves, all through him. And soon then after the Lord had spoken and received up into heaven, he sat at the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking, working with them and confirming the word with signs following. It's a simple task. That's the job we've been set. You know, the scriptures tell us where to love one another. We're to walk in the ways that Christ would have us to walk. We're to preach the gospel. You know, we're to stand firm on the promises that he's placed before us. You know, we need to continually take a look at ourselves and see, well, why do I come? What am I doing? What is my job? 
Am I about my father's business? Am I, you know, treating the, the spirit that God has given me with the respect it deserves? Or am I just becoming a little accustomed to it, a little tired and a little bit, oh, yes, I've been around a long time. Oh, I've done this or I've done that. What we did yesterday means nothing about today, does it? It's dead and gone. It's what we do today that counts. We've got to remember that. We've got to remember the fact that we're new every day. It's a fresh start. Whether we had a good day or a bad day the day before, it's gone. We've got to make the next one a good one. We've got to make every post a winner. We've got to be looking around at what we can do for God and what, what we can do for our mankind or what we can do for somebody in the fellowship or, or whatever it may be. But the Bible tells me I'm a servant. And you know, if we're servants, we're to obey our master and God is our master. You know, we're to do what he wants us to do. And, and you know, the world tells us that it's all about me. It's all about you. It's all about us. It's, it's, we're the most important thing in our own world. There is nothing more important than yourself. Make sure you satisfy yourself first. You ought to be selfish. This is the attitude that we've got. I mean, that's the world, isn't it? It's all about what I can get and I don't care who I hurt to get there. It doesn't matter who I have to tread on or what I do. It doesn't matter how many lies I have to tell. It doesn't matter if I have to steal, kill, whatever. As so long as I can get all those things that I want, that makes me successful. That makes me important. It makes you a winner. Not in the sight of God. It's not what it's about. Let's just go over to Romans chapter 6 and verse 1, please. You know, we need to be making sure that we just take stock of ourselves every morning when we get up, every day. You should, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead in sin live any longer therein? You know, we've gone through the waters of baptism, received the Holy Ghost. We've died to our old selves. We've taken on a commitment to serve the Lord. A commitment to serve the Lord. You know, we need to think about that. What have we committed ourselves to? I knew that before I came to the Lord, just by the testimony of the people who were witnessing to me, that if I got involved in the fellowship, you know, got baptized, received this Holy Spirit they're talking about, that my life would change. Needless to say, I didn't want it to change. I was very content, very happy. But I knew that just by their testimony, they didn't drink. They didn't smoke. They didn't swear. You know, they were three things I did a lot of. You know? Gone. How, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do I take those things from my life? They were part of who I was. All of those things. And yet once I received the Holy Spirit, those things fell away. Once I received the power of God, I realized the commitment I'd made. And God honored that commitment and took those things away from me and delivered me from those problems that I had. And he continues to deliver us daily. He made a commitment to us. We need to honor the commitment with our service, don't we? That's what we need to be doing. And it says, know you not that so many of us were baptized unto Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him in baptism unto death. That like as Christ was risen from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in a newness of life. Every day you walk in a newness of life. That's the amazing thing that God has given us, this ability to be able to get up, dust ourselves off, Seek his face and put the past behind us. Put yesterday behind us. To walk forward, to look forward to what's going on. Not dwelling on what we've mucked up the day before or how well we did or whatever it may be. We don't glory in the past. All the glory goes to God. 
We're just the tools that he uses to preach his gospel or to, to speak to somebody or to help a brother or sister or to whatever it may be. He says, knowing, uh, and likeness of his resurrection, uh, yeah, did I read five? No. Okay, so if we have then been planted together in his likeness of his death, we should also, in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing that the old man was crucified with him and the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we serve not sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. And that's a freedom that the world can't give. You know, they can't take it away from you. You can walk away from the Lord, but the world cannot take that away from you. We've been set free from all that. He says, now if you be dead with Christ, we believe we also shall live with him. Knowing that Christ being risen from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, that's our salvation. That's our promise. That's what we've been given. This is the opportunity we've been given in this life, is to be able to walk on in that experience and do something with it. You know, most people want to leave their mark on the world, don't they? You know, they, well, most, I don't, don't really care, but I do now, but I didn't, if that makes sense. You know, I want to leave my mark on the world now, whereas before, when I came, before I came, but I didn't care. It, it wasn't something that interests me, but now, I want to be able to bring as many people to the Lord as I possibly can. That's the mark I want to leave. You know, that's that's my goal. That's my ambition. That is my desire to see as many people as possible filled with the Holy Ghost, walking and rejoicing in the love of God, knowing that love, having that same compassion and that same empathy that the Holy Spirit gives you, that delight in all things. I mean, who, who would believe that, you know, oh, I couldn't years ago, that I could take so much pleasure in just the simplest things that God's created just by looking at them. Whereas before it was just, <laughs> who cares? It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, I got staggered when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and I went out on the school bus run and I saw a frost and, and it was on the fence and then the cobwebs and, and the sun's coming up. And, 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 you know, I might have got dust in my eye again, you know, like, wow, it's pretty amazing. I'm going, what's going wrong? Something's, I'm soft, turn into Ross. You know, couldn't believe it. It's just amazing to have that experience. And this is what God's given me. You know, I just cannot thank him enough that he cared enough and loved me enough to sacrifice himself for me and for you and for everybody else. You know, that's what we've been given. Um, it says, neither uh, yield your members as instruments unto unrighteous and unto sin." But yield yourselves unto God as you're also alive from the dead and your members are instruments unto righteousness unto God. For sin shall have no more dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. Set free. No longer under the law, but under grace. And yet we continually want to put ourselves back under the law. You know, we don't want to be like that. Just realize that we're under grace. What then... Shall we sin because we are, are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not to whom you yield yourselves, servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey, whether it is sin unto death or unto obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that, that you were servants of sin, but that you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which you believed. And have been made free from sin. And you've become the servants of righteousness. And that's what we've become. You know, it's why we come. It's why we turn up to things. It's why we, we have that desire to talk to people and tell them about the love of God. It's why we want to, have, want to just see good things in people. You know, we want to see great things happening in people's lives regardless. It's why when you, you hear of some tragedy, 
tragedy going on in the world, your heart goes out with compassion. Whereas, you know, like a lot of people like that anyway, but I certainly wasn't before I came to the Lord. I couldn't give two hoots, not my problem. That was how I treated it. So what? Big deal. You know, not my issue. Someone else can fix that. You know, it's funny the, the, the number of times you find yourself praying for people you don't know in situations around the world or circumstances that you've got no control over and have no idea what's going on, but you find yourself praying for those people or for that situation because you know that's what you can do. And that's the love you have within you. And that's the spirit just, you know, when you're grieving, it wants to release that. And it says, um, yeah, so what are we, the sins of righteousness? Oh, no, you know, we're not in sin. We're following after righteousness. We're not the servants of sin anymore. That's who we are. And it's just so important that we get that. Just go to um, Luke chapter 2. And verse 46. Thanks, Ron. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. This is the parents looking for Jesus, as you know the, the, the story. Sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee with sorrow. And he said unto them, how is it that you sought me with you not that I must be about my father's business? It's what we're about, isn't it? We must be about our father's business. You know, we've been bought and paid for with a price. You know, we don't belong to the family ties as such anymore. I'm sure we have them and we care for them and have you, but we have a responsibility to God foremost and first. That's where our heart must lie. That's where we must be responsible. They're the, the tasks that we must be attending to. You know, we must be about our father's business. It's so important, you know, that this is what we're about. And we're not about, you know, the, the, the things of the world. You know, we get onto it. I mean, you look at the, the, the world and it's all lust and it's pride, high-mindedness, you know, drunkenness, greed, envy, hatefulness, you know. They're unforgiving out there, aren't they? There's no forgiveness. There's no, there's no compassion. It's not who we are. You know, all those things, if they're coming forth and lust and pride and high-mindedness and all those things, greed, envy, if they're coming up in our walk, we need to be seeking the Lord about it. We need to be leaving him at Jesus' feet because it's going to rob us of our salvation. It's going to tear us down. We're not going to be building up our brothers and sisters. We'll be tearing them down. We won't be feeding them. You know, we don't want to just be destroying one another. We want to be rejoicing in the love that Christ placed us within. It's just so important. You know, there's, there's, there's lots of jobs in the Lord, isn't there? There's plenty of things we can do. You know, and we can be involved in all sorts of things. And we come here and we, we, we come to feed one another to encourage one another, to build each other up. Because it's, it's hard out there in the world. You know, the, the things that go on in people's lives and the illness that we have to suffer and, and go through at times and the sickness and the tragedies that befall us. You know, we're no different to anyone else out there that, that have these issues going on, but we have the Holy Spirit. And not only do we have the Holy Spirit, we have the brotherhood and the fellowship of Jesus Christ in our fellowship, don't we? You know, we have the support of our brothers and sisters who pray for us, who, who care for us, who want to be there to uphold us. We have so much more than those people out there in the world. But do we appreciate it at all times? Do we just take it for granted? It's very easy, isn't it, to take these things for granted? And I just know over the years, yeah, there are times where I've just taken the fellowship for granted because it's, it's just who it is. And they're there and they... I know they love me and I know they pray for me and I know, that, oh, yeah, it's great. You know, I need to appreciate everything too. I need to realize and treasure 
what I've been given because it's so important that we don't take it for granted. We don't get caught up and we realise that there's plenty of things we can do in the Lord. And it doesn't have to be a, a physical job or what have you. It can be just praying for one another, supporting one another, caring for one another. All those things. We just don't have it. Um, we'll just go to we'll go to 1 Corinthians. Well-known scriptures. Talking about the spiritual gifts here. Chapter um, 14. I love these. These are all these great scriptures that you, when you first get filled with the Holy Spirit, you can't let go of, isn't it? You know, I, I showed everyone this one when I was witnessing to them. They just looked at me like I was nuts. But anyway, how is it then, brethren, that when you come together, every one of you have a psalm, have a doctrine, have a tongue, have a revelation, have an interpretation, and let all things done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let him be by two or at the most three, and of course, let one interpret. And if there be no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church and let him speak unto himself, unto God. And let the prophet speak two or three and let the others judge. You know, it, it's, it's an incredibly important part of our meeting, isn't it? The spiritual gifts. Now, when we're, we're, we're coming to a meeting, do we, do we pray about that? You know, the folk that probably drive in, they're mostly praying as they're coming in. And they're praying about the gifts or they're praying about the meeting or what have you, or just having that time of prayer because it's what you tend to do when you live out of town. But we need to be praying about being used in the Holy Ghost. We need to be praying about being used in the spiritual gifts. It's so important that, that we don't go, oh, so-and-so will use that or so-and-so will speak out or so-and-so. And, and, and that's just slack. It's not carrying our bit, is it? It's not doing the right thing. We all need to be partaking of this and seeking the Lord about being used in the gifts. If you've never spoken out in the gifts, pray about it. Start praying about it. The Lord will use you. He'll bless you. You know, I, I, I still remember, I mean, when I first came along, I, I, you know, like I said before, I tried to figure out how it was a con job and who was giving signals to who was using the gifts and where they were doing the signs and all this sort of stuff. Got spirit filled and I'm sitting there for weeks praying about Lord, I want to speak out. Oh, Lord, I did this for weeks. I, and I think, oh, it's going to be me. It's going to be tongue had changed me. Oh, no, it can't be me. can't be me. can't be me. And then one day I'm standing down here at the front and I'm seeking that. And I'm, oh, Lord, I want to be using the gifts. And I heard this bloke speaking in tongues. I'm, oh, wow, that's really good. Then I realized it was me. Got up like that. I went, oh, that was pretty impressive. And, you know, that's what we need to do sometimes. We need to really seek the Lord about being used in the gifts. And then I go, oh, oh, Lord, I want to interpret. I want to prophesy. Oh, you know, but how do I know it's of me, you know? And I've, I've told heaps of people this, but years ago when Hugh Dunstan spoke out in the gifts, and he, old Hugh, and for those that don't know him, he's a, he was an elderly gentleman. He over spoke out twice. And when he spoke out, it was really long. And you could hear a pin drop. And it was really profound. It was this amazing prophecy. I'm like, wow, that was really good. The next time he spoke out, I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh, wow. Everything he said went through my head before he said it. And I'm going, man, that is so good. Going on. And then he just stopped and I've gone, oh, don't stop. There's more. And then I'm thinking, oh, should I have gone on? Or, you know, all that sort of stuff. On the way home, Sam's talking to me in the car. We're obviously talking about the gifts. Did you hear that? I said, oh, yeah. But he didn't finish. He was going to say this, 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 and this. And Sam goes, you were talking to him. He said, no. She said, well, that's what he told you. You know, have I ever doubted the spiritual gifts again? No. Just full confirmation. Please do yourself a favor. Seek the Lord about using the gifts and enjoy the blessing. You know, you get a touch from the Lord when you use the gifts. And it's not just, I mean, you get a blessing. The church gets fed. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to feed one another, to uphold one another, to encourage one another. It's up to us to be seeking the Lord about doing these things. It's just important that we do because if we don't, we're letting ourselves down, not just the fellowship. 
We're letting each other down and yourself. Let's start seeking the Lord about using the gifts. You know, I love the fact that we've got people who come up and play music. And then we've got other folks that will come and sing for us. You know, because I love getting that blessing from the folk doing something like that. You know, you're sharing that, you're doing that for others, and it's just a wonderful blessing to have, to have that. I mean, I had a house meeting where we had no music. That was us. We could sing anything we could clap to. We only had one slow chorus. It was the only one that we killed. Now unto him, that was it. That was the only one we could do. We finished with it every Wednesday, Thursday. It was every week. That was our finishing song. And it didn't sound too bad in the finish. You know, we had three adults and four or five kids, and we used to operate the spiritual gifts because, you know, at one stage there, we, we used to have a lot of people from Goulburn come out, and I said to the, the house meeting one night, I said, look, I said, we've got to start praying about using the gifts. I said, because, you know, we're always expecting the folk from Goulburn to come out to use the gifts in case we get a visitor. So I said, but what happens if we get a visitor and they're not here? We need to be well-versed in the gifts. We need to be seeking the Lord. The only thing we ever had trouble getting out in the finish was tongues. Not bad. The kids, and like our primary school, coming out in the gifts. And, and you know, praise the Lord. You know, we, we just, and it's, it's just a matter of getting in, seeking the Lord, using it. And don't worry if you muck it up. Who cares? It doesn't matter. You'll do better next time. We all get nervous. We all get scared. It's, it's, it's like normal, but you've got to step out in faith. It's a wonderful thing to be able to be used in the gifts. So let's just be seeking the Lord about that because it's, it's for the edification of everybody. So let's just not be lazy. Let's be diligent for the Lord. You know, read you know, that, that whole section through there from uh, Corinthians 12 to 14. Just read the whole thing about the body of Christ and how we've got all the gifts. You know, pray about it. So let's um, really seek the Lord about it this week and just we'll get on board. We'll just go to Matthew... Um, Chapter 5, please. Won't keep you terribly long today. In verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, this is Jesus, of course, he went up unto the mountain. And when he said the disciples came unto him, he opened his mouth, saying to them, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We got this? Right. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You know, we've got a hunger after that, that knowledge and, and that and thirst after the righteousness and the love of God. You know, and he'll, he'll fill us. Blessed are the merciful, so they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you and falsely, for my name's sake, or for my sake, rejoice with and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You know, we're going to cop a bit of flack from time to time. We're going to have some, some harsh things, but it's nowhere near as bad as it could be, is it? You know, you go to some places around the world and it's, it's pretty horrendous. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savour, wherewithal it be salted. It is henceforth good for nothing and to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world and a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men, men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but put, the candle, put it in a candlestick and giveth light unto all that are in the house. So let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the, your Father which is in heaven. And it's so important that we are out there and they, the people see that there's a difference. They see the love that you've got within you, that you share that. You know, and, and look, 
we know we're near perfect and we're going to make mistakes and what have you, but it doesn't mean to say we can't go, yep, we'll get on past that. It's just so important that we, we, we realise that there are things going on out there that we have no control over, but we can just seek the Lord about it. Just go down to verse 37 for the sake of a bit of time. It says, but let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay, and whatsoever is more, it cometh of evil. He says, you have heard it uh, that has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I, ask, I say unto you, you resist, you know, not evil, he said, but whoever shall smite thee on the right cheek, turn him also the other. You know, that's the world, isn't it? To get revenge. To, to have that hatred and to get somebody back and and I'll, I'll get them, you know. And, and you see it with kids and you now our boys were notorious for it, you know, when they were young. One would hit the other, the other one might wait three or four days before he got him back. But he'd do it, you know. But it's not what the Lord would have us to do, is it? And if any man will sue you at the, at the law, he said, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And who shall else compel you to go, uh, compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain? And let him that ask of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. You know, it, it's so important that we, we don't get caught up in, in the worldly stuff in the petty stuff. You know, it's it, all these things are thrown against you by Satan to just rob you of your joy and to drag you down. And, and we've just got to be careful that we don't get caught up in it. And, and it's, it's all consuming when these things uh, are sent against us. Now you have heard it also that thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemy, bless them that curse you, do good unto them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. It's a big ask, isn't it? But it's what we should do. You know, we've got to pray for those folk. We've got to seek the Lord for all those people. You know, and, and you'll come across folk that'll do the wrong thing by from time to time. You've got to forgive, forget, and get on with it. But you be my children of the Father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and the good. And sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love them which love you, you reward you. What reward have you? Do you not uh, even the publicans the same? And it's so true, isn't it? It doesn't matter. And if you salute your brother only, what do you, uh, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And that's what we strive to be, is a better person. You know, we, we come to the meetings to be a better version of ourselves, to be uplifted through the Holy Ghost so that we can, we can do better for the Lord, so we can be a better servant. You know, he's continually moulding us and, and, and changing us and turning us around, and he's, he's knocking the sharp edges off us, and some of us have had a few more sharp edges than others and a lot worse than others. But it's what God does. He moulds us. He makes us into something better. And if just go over into, we'll finish in um, chapter 6 and verse 7. Says, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. And be not therefore alike unto them, for your Father knoweth all uh, what things you have need before you even ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, and the Lord's Prayer is, is something that, you know, I don't know, we, we mostly learned as kids, I suppose, and we just sort of set it off by rote and didn't think about it. But when you read it and you start to think about what he's, he's saying, and this is how we should pray, and this is the sort of things we should be praying about and, and, and the way we should be praying, you just need to take it in and think about it. Next time you're having a, a read and a time of prayer, read that and have a time of prayer at the same time. And it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. You know, we just want the Lord to provide for us each day. 
you know, forgive us our debtors as we forgive others. You know, we've got to have that forgiveness in our hearts. It's so important that we have that attitude. It says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And, and we need that. We need to be, to be delivered and, and just taken away from the temptations that the world sets before us. It says, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive a man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites with sad continence, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men as to fast. Verily, unto say, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face. It's funny, you know, like I, I, I read that scripture because the first fast ever came to you, I thought my throat was cut. And I'm thinking, oh, how am I going to manage, you know, food and not having any for a day? Bad income. I walked in here and there was these people laughing and smiling. I'm going, what are they doing? <laughs> Didn't take long to get the message. It's just so important that we realize why we come, why we do the things we do and what we're about. We need to be about our father's business. We need to be making sure that when we come to a, the meeting, we're here to not just be fed, but to feed others, to serve one another and to rejoice in the love that Jesus has placed us within. Amen.